I want to start this speech by saying a big congratulations to the class of 2010. I am truly humbled and truly nervous to be standing up here speaking to you all today, mostly because I have known most of you for at least the last seven years, and I'm terribly proud to consider myself one of your peers. Where are we headed? This is the bold question that presents itself in our minds today. But before we contemplate this, I would like to ask that we look back a little on where we have come from. It feels to me like these last 12 years of Milton Public edu Education have lasted forever. I don't know about you, but when I was younger, I felt that the five-day school week was always going to be the schedule of my life. Graduation from high school was a distant event that you might slowly seem to approach, but would never reach. And yet, here we are today. It has been a long road looking back, but today it is not just about looking on the footprints behind us. It is about looking to where we are heading tomorrow, and all the tomorrows after it. You know, there are some days when I see the news or hear depressing stories, that momentarily make me less than optimistic about the future. There are some days when I hear predictions of looming disasters ahead of us and feel my spirit weaken. But today is not one of those days. Today is a day where I can look out before me and see a group of my closest friends who are prepared to go out and put their own stamp on the world. You all, having the behaviors, personalities, and good sense needed to enter life outside Milton High School has given me hope that I will be just as prepared to face my own future as I know you all are. I have very little knowledge of where I'm going with my life, and I suspect that is the case for most of us, at least to some extent. We have all been walking along the path together, but after this summer in the sun, we will all start to find our own unique ways to travel forward. As I look out at all of you, I see the world's next great lawyers, doctors, journalists, electricians, artists, entrepreneurs, volunteers, musicians, engineers, athletes, authors, soldiers, and parents. And because we will diverge in all kinds of varying directions, it is hard to think of something to tell you all that I believe is worth saying. As I struggled to think of what to tell you all during this speech, I decided to focus on ideas that I wish I had discovered earlier on in my life. First, I would like to ask you to always remember that there is no dream too big. I know many people would disagree with me about this. There are plenty of people who say that dreams that are too unrealistic leave young souls to hunger for visions too far out of reach. They say that such dreams leave us staring up at the stars, paralyzed by their grandness, and unable to focus on smaller satisfactions. It is true that not everyone achieves all of their dreams. But as a hero of mine, Henry David Thoreau once said, in the long run, we only hit what we aim at. All of us have to live have one life to live. Why should any of us presume as to what is possible and what is not before we have even lived? There is a chance you won't succeed with some of your life goals, but dedicating yourself to these dreams will surely make your life more meaningful than accepting a faith that doesn't inspire you. And so I ask all of you to try, just as I am going to try, to allow a vision for your future, to thrive with the confidence to achieve your greatest aspirations, no matter how lofty they are. We all have the power to do what is hard and to achieve what is great. We shouldn't shortchange ourselves. But with this ability comes a great responsibility. Everyone has the power to achieve practically any goal they set their sights on. But we all must remember that our greatest responsibility is to keep ourselves happy. We may become hypnotized by the glitter and glaring lights of a society that proclaims what the perfect life is supposed to be. 
but don't betray your own perfect life for a false one. Some people out in the world that struggle to find what makes them happy attempt to replace this with wealth or status or cynicism. The simple truth is that you, your friends, your family, and the chance to work hard at work worth doing are the only things you will ever need to be happy in this world. Never let anyone convince you otherwise. While attending Milk High School has taught us many lessons about the world around us, I think we would all agree that school isn't everything. While we all would probably accept a million dollars rather than not accept a million dollars, I think most of us would agree that money isn't everything. There is little point to focus all our efforts on improving our standard of living if these actions make us too busy to live. I would like to end my speech with my favorite Beatles quotation. And in the end, the love you take is equal to the love you make. The surest way to make yourself happy is to share the world with people that you love. Love is the greater power that binds us all together and the spark that makes us revel in life. I think we have all been made aware of this over the years by the support of our family and friends who are here with us and by those who, like my best friend Sam Chicello, who should be graduating alongside us today, are here in the spirit. Make sure that you are having fun and spending time with the people and things that you love, for then you will always be sure that you are heading in the right direction. Thank you. I love you all so much, and congratulations to class.